In this episode, we're looking at automatic farming with mesicons and pipeworks. So I have this um, kind of lame build, but it works. So what we have is a node detector and another node detector. We have four node breakers, and then we have our four plots of soil, I guess, where we can plant stuff. And I have water in the corners here. Um, I just had this glass as a temporary thing, and I never put dirt back there. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter, though. It doesn't affect anything, just so the water can water these things. Uh, both of these node breaker or uh, node detectors are looking for farming wheat underscore eight, which is fully grown wheat. Um, farming wheat underscore eight. Uh, this is, I think, only at stage seven right now. And this is to make the make the automaticness a little more reliable, basically. So we figure if we're growing four things of wheat, if both of the ones on the end are fully grown, there's a pretty good chance the two in the center are fully grown. Whereas if the scanner was only checking one position, um, there's less of a chance that all of the wheat's going to be fully grown. So that's why I have it on both ends. And when these detect the fully grown wheat, sends a signal through the muscons. Um, you can see this insulated one here has a signal. You can also see this is lighting up green to let us know it has a signal. There is an AND gate here. So when there is a signal on both of these wires, it'll send a signal to this, which then sends the signal over to all the node breakers, which will break all of these pieces of wheat. And I'm kind of hoping we get to see this happen, but I don't know how, how lucky we're going to be. And then there is a delayer with the delay set to the maximum of four, which goes to a mesicon, a vertical mesicon there, which then goes underground to all of the deployers. And these deployers have wheat seeds in them and cobble. And you might be asking yourself, why in the world would you put a bunch of cobble into your deployers? Well, the reason I've done that is because as the stuff gets broken, which hopefully happens soon. No, we're going to cheat. I've got some fertilizer here for just this purpose. There we go. So we see the node breakers broke everything. Our new seeds got planted. You can see the seeds as our output here from the node breaker going through the pipes and going down to these and if these are all full it goes to this teleport tube which just comes up if i could get out how am i stuck there we go comes up to this chest so i just threw our wheat seeds in there and the wheat so we can look at the sorting pneumatic pipe here so the chest is off of red and then the yellow one is the pipe going down so seeds will go down to refill the deployers and the wheat will just go right into the chest. So to get back to why there is cobble in these deployers, because the way stuff works when it's coming through these pipes is it'll fill up all of the inventory slots in our first deployer. So we would have to fill every single slot here with 99 seeds before it put a single seed into the second deployer. And then both of those would have to be full before it put anything into this. And all three of these would have to be full before anything went in here. So doing this, we only have to have 99 seeds for each, which is still a lot, I understand. But once you have your, what would that be, 396 seeds, you are 100% fully automated. Um, and of course, you could get fancier. And you could automate the whole process of fertilizing. So here we can see a little better our wheat coming out and the seeds. The wheat just goes to the chest. The seeds all go down. And if we go quickly, you can see there's... Oh, you know, I bet because I'm in creative, it's not actually pulling anything out of these. I wonder if that's what's going on. I am in creative because I wasn't about to build this all for realsies. So what if you didn't want to 
have these no detectors to do this? What if there was another way? Well, there is. Um, I'll just do, sure, I can throw anything in here so it'll never detect. It'll never find a node named D. So I can fully grow all of this wheat. All right, so our other options. We could use a push button right here. And uh, we could actually bypass all of this. Get rid of, oh, I suppose I can't break it with that. Okay. Get rid of the AND gate, which just sends a positive signal if both input signals are positive. And we can throw a push button here, which I don't know why that's not connected anymore, but let's see if it still works. It doesn't. Okay, so I may have to put my push button a little further away. There we go. So now we use the push button, the node breakers run, break all the wheat, and our deployers run and plant the seeds. And if we do this again, it breaks all of our wheat and it plants our seeds. Now you might be noticing a little something funny going on here. Right there. Every few times, here we go, something is applying fertilizer. Oh, that's because there's a fertilizer in the node breaker. So a node breaker will break whatever's in front of it with whatever item is in the slot. So if we put, I don't have anything in here that's a tool that would break something. But if we put fertilizer into a node breaker, it'll actually, um, it'll do the same as punching the node with fertilizer. So we would need a system by which we could automate this as well. So we will break that, we'll break this, and we'll put a push button here. So I can now push button and it should be applying fertilizer. So we'll hit this push button to just plant us all our seeds. Yay, seeds are planted. And then I need to get some fertilizer first. Let me just, um, and this of course would be only if you're using a mod that provides fertilizer, such as the bone meal mod or something similar. And uh, I'll just throw, I don't know, 20 in there. Uh, this is this is kind of inefficient though. We can, we can improve our efficiency. So we have all the wheat seeds here, right? And we hit this and it fertilizes. Okay, well, sure, this stuff's growing. But who wants to sit around here and be clicking a button? That's not very automatic, you know? So let's make it more automatic. Plus, I accidentally am placing buttons, which I don't understand exactly how that's happening. So yeah, let's make it more automatic. To do that, let's grab a blinky plant. And what a blinky plant will do is just give us a pulsing signal. So it just switches between on and off. And every time it does that, it's going to apply fertilizer. Now, of course, it's going to continue to apply fertilizer to the fully grown plants as well, which is kind of inefficient because we're wasting fertilizer. So we may want to harvest our plants a little sooner because this guy isn't, this guy here just doesn't want to grow. He's got, he's got the fertilizer in there. Just not doing anything. But what's up with that? I'm actually not sure what's up with that. It should be growing just as, as quickly as anything else is. All right, well, let's harvest that. So with this, we could realize that, hmm, well, if we're constantly applying fertilizer to these, maybe we could go back to the, to the original method, which was using the node detectors. So let's go ahead and rewire this. Um, that needs to go bye-bye, as does that. I need my AND gates again. Had I really wanted to spend a lot of time making this much better, I could have built a couple of these. But that was, uh, that was not in the original plan to go and do these extra steps. All right, 
Go away, button. I don't like you. There we are. All right, so this is set again. I should probably go back to farming wheat underscore eight as a node we're looking for. Same thing here. All right, but now we have the um, a, a kind of problem where these are only doing something if there is a signal from the node detectors. Kind of not what we want. So what do we do? Well, we break these out. We grab our insulated Mesicon wire. And I th think, yeah, places goofy. There we go. So this is isolated now from the node breakers that are applying our fertilizer. And what we're going to do is put a blinky plant up on top of this. I think in order to do that, I actually need a node. So I'll just go ahead and put a piece of glass right there and put the blinky plant on top of it. Now, okay, I did not realize it would do all of that. So to So to combat that, we'll just do this. So the blinky plant is still applying our fertilizer. We're making the node breakers apply our fertilizer, actually. And there we go. The node detector detects the grown plants, breaks the nodes. Wheat goes to the chests. Seeds goes down here to replenish the deployers. And we have our nice little automated farm. This up here was uh, for a demonstration, but I didn't end up using it, so that serves no purpose. This is uh, also just some testing stuff, so you can completely ignore that. And ta-da! We have an automated system. Now, unfortunately with how this is set up, I can't put a pipe to it because I have a Mescon wire running here. So what I would have to do, and could be done, would be to excavate this row out and run the wire underneath, or run the wire one node further back. Let's actually just do that real quick, real quick, just to demo how we would go about doing this. So we take a normal Mesicon, and we'll pop that there and here, and we will go ahead and break these out. Sorry for that abrupt transition. Um, turns out what I thought I could do, I couldn't do. So I had to um, I had to do something different. And because this wasn't really planned out beforehand, uh, yeah, I just ended up with a kind of a weird transition. And I can actually break that. Okay, so what we have here now, uh, I initially thought I could put inputs through the back, but you can't. Uh, turns out, oh, and I've kind of destroyed my, my testing setup here. The only, um, I don't want to say legal, but the only actual input slots allowed um, are the sides, actually. You can input items to the sides. You can put input items from the bottom, input items from the top. The back side is always an output. So I had to redesign this. So what's going on here now? We've got... Same old, same old. Seeds being placed by the deployer, the two node detectors breaking everything, and then triggering, or the two node detectors telling the node breakers here to break everything, and then replanting everything. And this is just using the pulsing from the blinky plant. Another cut because of another goof. So this is working properly now. The self-contained injector is putting items out item wise so one item at a time runs through here under the undersides of the node breakers to keep them all filled to the 99 that they can hold uh, when you first set this up so let me just pull everything out of there oh well if you uh, aren't careful you'll it'll end up breaking the seeds but you do at least get your seeds back so that's nice but that really shouldn't have happened um, 
but there is a chance if you have a long enough run of them that your ones near the end will take a very long time to fill up if you're doing it a single stack at a time. So if you go to stack wise, it'll just do a whole stack worth and you'll fill up your whole line of fertilizing nodes rather quickly, which makes for great, great things. Uh, and that's our seeds again. And that's pretty much it. If you had to manually trigger the deploying, I've got the switch here, but you would, you would just do that. Um, I did just break the system, but there we go. But uh, everything hasn't grown, so we shouldn't really have any issues. And there we go. An automatic farm is not the absolute best design in the world. Um, there are better. It could be a little tighter. It could be a little cleaner, but it does work. So run with this information and build your own automatic farms and, you know, make improvements. It's always easier once you have it built to go, oh, I could do this differently and then do that differently to improve it. It's, it's totally, totally an option. Like I could have so many things different in this, but I didn't really want to spend too much time building it off camera. And I didn't really want to do too much on camera because then it would just take too long. So there you go, an automatic farm design using mesocons and pipers.